So I think if you look at, for instance, at the um, where content comes from that is being recommended to you on Instagram, we've been very open about the fact that over the last year or two, we were already leaning into having more recommended unconnected content, in other words, content that was not connected to your family and friends, but that our AI, AI systems have been able to scour the internet and say, you might be interested in this, you might find this amusing, you might find this fun, you might find this uh, you know, educational. You see an acceleration of AI systems, not only recommending content, but now increasingly generating content. So one of the things that we've been working on is how to make sure that people can distinguish between the provenance, the, the, the origin of something which is uh, you know, ge generative, uh, generated by AI uh, rather than generated by human beings. So we will have watermark, you know, visible, clear watermarks on uh, the photorealistic imagery that people will be able to uh, use in something called um, Slash Imagine, which is our our photorealistic tool integrated into Meta AI, which is our sort of Meta sort of chat GPT equivalent where you can ask it anything from a restaurant recommendation for this evening to how to plan your next summer and holiday. This, and this is going to be baked into, yeah. into Messenger, yeah. into WhatsApp, into things like that. Exactly, and I was going to say, and, and all of that gets then baked into all of the platforms, into, into the messaging apps as well as the social, uh, social, media, social media apps. And then, uh, again, I think this is a, a new departure, not entirely new. Some companies look at uh, character.ai, for yeah. instance, they've tried this, is we will be leaning into the development of AI characters, personae, you know, from Jane Austen to, you know, a Tom Brady um, uh, style, you know, sports expert. It says a lot expert. about your taste right now. Well, yeah, yeah it, it's a big range there. Um, so as more people start to use these tools, which sound really exciting, I imagine that creates a really robust data set to train these models. Do users have the ability, though, to opt out if they don't want to be part of that training set? Yeah, they do. They do. And they have the ability to, for instance, delete the data which they, uh, which they have when they're interacting with some of these AI characters, these AI personae that I sp spoke about um, And, it, and are these personas, uh, sorry just to interrupt, but are they, are they an alternative to having a friend? Are they, like, can you message someone that you wish existed and who doesn't? Or is this a... An existing... Well, yeah. you can, well I think it, it'll be very interesting to... Well, actually, I think the truth is, let's see how people use them. Often it's the, it's the most sort of unexpected use cases that really take off, but you will be able to in, you know, you'll be able to bring in these uh, AI persona into a group chat, so you have a mixture of. So if you if you're a, if you're a group of friends who are organising a, a holiday, you'll be able to all together chat with one of these, AI, you know, with the, the travel agent who is an AI persona who'll be able to give you recommendations uh, in that in that chat group. 